Welcome to Planet Microcap. I'm your host, Robert Kraft, and joining me today is Charles Salome. He is the CEO of Sangoma Technologies. It's a publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, STC on the TSX and SANG on NASDAQ. And Sangoma will be presenting at our upcoming investor conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase in Vancouver in association with Small Cap Discoveries at the Fairmount Waterfront Vancouver on September 25 and 26, 2024. For more information to meet Charles to see the Sangoma presentation, please register at planetmicrocapshowcase.com. And with that, Charles, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Not bad, Robert. How about yourself? I, I'm just thankful I was able to get through the intro. You know, yeah. I, I, I tell myself that every single time, but you know, each time I'm like, wow, I did it. Uh, yeah, but you got a good, got a good uh, radio voice. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, I have a lot of people telling me I also have a face for radio too. So, <laughs> you know, this it all it's all part and parcel. Um, <laughs> but uh, Charles, that, thank you again for, for uh, taking the time here this morning, as well as to participate in our event uh, coming up here in Vancouver. So, you know, I remember uh, uh, having some interaction with Sang uh, Sangoma, geez, like six or seven years ago now. Now, you know, from my understanding, the story has completely changed. So I want to get that. So, you know, for those that aren't aware of Sangoma as it exists today, can you give us that quick overview and history of the company? Sure. Like so Sangoma was um, was uh, a company that's kind of grown over the past, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Actually, it started in 1984 uh, as a very tiny little company. And then it's evolved through many, many acquisitions, about seven or eight acquisitions, actually, quite frankly, 11 acquisitions over the last seven years. Um and over that period of time, it, you know, it, it caught the wave uh, of the COVID uh, work from home environment where UCAS was becoming really, really popular. And uh, most of the business was really centered around the UCAS business. Um, then as the 2022 hit, uh, the company sort of evolved, started adding more pieces to it. And uh, it was well beyond a UCAS company. At that time, the CEO had left. And what I when I joined the company, I sort of saw the company as a collection of essential communication assets that were not quite integrated at the time that I joined the company, but really provided essential communications to both the small market, which is where it was focused, but also had the opportunity to take its services up market to a more sophisticated mid-market company. And so for the last uh, three, a year or so, we've been evolving the integration of these components. The company holds and has held a position on the Magic Quadrant for Gardner for the past nine years. Uh, it is a very sophisticated uh, company with a unique set of assets that I'll explain a little bit more later, but that's essentially what we do. Uh, platform play around communications, essential communications, voice, data, video, fax, security, uh, and then a whole plethora of additional assets that have been collected over the last number of years in hardware and security, SD-WAN capacity and so forth um, that, you know, really were not quite integrated when I joined and, and you know, the, the, the challenge and the, and the opportunity is to integrate those components to extract far more value out of the company than what has been historically had in the past. The, the fun part, you know, yeah. the, the integration uh, expert part. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Charles, what, what would you say makes, you know, you know, cause people hear, you know, cloud-based communications technology, all the various assets, I'm sure you're very well aware of like, yes, I know that sounds like, you know, uh, how do we differentiate? But I mean, I'm curious from your perspective, how, how would you say Sangoma Technologies, both your actual products and services and the company itself is unique and different compared to some of your peers out there? Well, like I said, the company is a, is a culmination of several assets uh, that were acquired over the last seven or eight years. And, um, you know, the, 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 the sad part of the company over the past three or four years was that it really just focused its attention on the most popular opportunity during the COVID era, which was UCAS. And to be quite frankly, it's kind of like a set of Lego block pieces. The UCAS component of the company, which is what a lot of people have in the marketplace, um, you know, is like the yellow Lego block. But we also have green ones and blue, blue blocks and black blocks. We have multiple different assets in the company that make the company quite unique. And the, the difference between our company and almost any other company in the small cap communication platform, or communications platform that is delivered both in the cloud where it's organized today, also in a hybrid model and also on a prem-based solution, but it's also surrounded by assets that we've acquired in hardware. We engineer our own hardware, produce our own hardware. We have our own security practice. We have an SD-WAN comp component to the business. We have a hardware resell component to the business. We have a SIP trunking component. For example, right now in this current uh, environment we're in, SIP trunking is one of the most popular platforms during an election cycle because there's tons of call centers who are using communication platforms to reach out to constituents to try and sway voters 
onto into their environments and SIP trunking is one of those assets. So what makes us unique is we're not just a UCAS company, which sadly is where we've been pigeonholed, but we have all the other components. Kind of think about it like a box of bits and bytes. But we can take those components, they're all they're all jumbled together. And we can organize them in a way that makes them industry contextual for particular industries, in particular healthcare or education or, or distributed retail. One of the things that also makes us unique is that our platforms are HIPAA compliant, that, which means that we're very unique to the healthcare industry, which is important. They're also GDRP compliant, which means I can take these platforms and these technologies anywhere in the world uh, because they do meet the data sovereignty rules for just de deploying them in, on a global basis. So it's a very unique organization. There are very few companies that actually have the collection of assets that we have. And one of the most valuable things we've done in the last year is begin to pull them together to create a unique set of, a unique toy, so to speak, that can serve the mid-market and the small end of the market at the same time. 100%. I already hear, I can, I'm already thinking of the title of our interview today is like, we're not just UCAS. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I promise. Um, yeah, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a very strong UCAS platform. Not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. So I mean, Charles, like you said, you came in. I think you said you came in a few years ago. So what was what were you doing prior to becoming CEO of Sangoma? I came in September of 2023, and before okay. that, I spent 32 years in the industry. So the first half of my career was uh, in the networking side, working for one of the largest telcos in Canada, which was Bell Canada, uh, running up from marketing all the way to running the network portfolios. Uh, and then doing a bunch of acquisition work, bought a bunch of companies in security and, and ironically enough, call centers and UCAS space, integrated those and became a CEO of the largest security company in Canada, then went to Nortel for a few years, became the global head of services for Nortel, then spent 12 years at Hewlett Packard, where I ran the Canadian, I was the Canadian president for the PC business, and then took over the Americas, uh, Hewlett Packard Americas services business. Then did a migration with with a company called CSE, and we formed DXE, which is one of, which is a very large, twenty six billion dollar system integrator. I moved then from there to Infosys, where I was running the account expansion program for Infosys on a global level, and took that company from, in a transformative way, from eight billion dollars to eighteen billion dollars over a five year period. So my my career has been long and deep, and quite privileged. Um, I bring a lot of enterprise skill to the table. We have a very powerful uh, team that I've put together, enterprise class executives who understand transformation, who know how to put pieces of the puzzle together to create and extract value. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a great run taking over this company. It's a great Canadian company with both Canadian and U.S. presence. I'm a Canadian myself, so there's some romantic notion here of trying to build a Canadian entity that has a global presence. And uh, I really think Sangoma has a, a phenomenal opportunity in front of itself. Very cool. All right. Well, final question for you here today. That's a two-parter, but they kind of go hand in hand with each other. So um, from in your opinion, what would you say are some of the company's value catalysts now for the rest of 24 going into 25? And what would you say are those one to two reasons why folks should want to meet with uh, St. Goma and yourself in Vancouver? I'll start with the second question first, right? So look, when I joined the company, I left a very successful executive career in the enterprise space because I saw an opportunity of value extraction from a company that was way undervalued relative to its asset base. And so the, the company, you know, I thought, oh, geez, the company needs to be bleed, must be bleeding cash. It would not. It's an incredibly strong balance sheet. It generates $40 million plus in cash. It runs $250 million in trailing revenue. And, you know, it's got an organic engine that can not only go after the small market, but now can go up market into the mid market, which quite frankly spends 44% of the global IT budgets. Um, you know, its debt position was $100 million plus when I started. We've already taken that down to 77, and I've notified the street we're going to bring that down to 55. And by cleaning up those balance sheets, we have the opportunity to grow now in multiple ways. Any great CEO is going to give themselves the opportunity to grow, not just organically, which is unfortunately where most leaders take their companies but inorganically as well. And to do the inorganic component, you need to have a strong balance sheet, low debt, solid cash position, all of which Sangoma had. However, the company is trading at about, uh, when I joined, about half of its peer group trailing EBITDA numbers. Well, our EBITDA stands up against anyone's. In fact, our EBIT would stand up against anyone in the industry right now. Uh, the, the stock has gone up 60% in the last year since I've joined. I think investors are gonna to wanna to hear the story, see the financial position of the company, and now as we pivot from internally focused transformation, which I've been doing for the last year in a very disciplined way, we're now pivoting to go to market and top line growth. 
So we've got our cash flow in line, we've got our debt down, we've got optionality for how we want to grow organically, inorganically, or through market expansion. Uh, and now it's time to get the top line organic engine firing, which we're now starting to see the green shoots of. And, and as we progress over the year, and you'll hear September the 18th when I give guidance for next year, uh, how we're going to perform, how we're going to execute on the organic engine, while simultaneously also integrating, having an integrated company that can now move inorganically much more efficiently and, and really identify the company as something more than just a UCAS player, which sadly has been a very commoditized business and has had compressed valuations. We're not that. We're much more than that. And that's what I hope to share with your audience when they see me in Vancouver. Very good, Charles. Well, with that, where can our audience go and find more information on Sangoma? Well, certainly you can reach out to me directly at csalome at sangoma.com. You can, you can go to our website to have a look at our, 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 we just updated our website so you can kind of get a better sense of the company and what we actually deliver on. You can talk to, you can go to the investor relations in, uh, area on the website as well and talk to Dennis Fong uh, from Load Rock who works with us on this, you know, but I think the easiest thing to do is come see me in Vancouver, sit at my table and I'll tell you the story of Sangoma in a lot more detail than what you get in this 10 minute little teaser. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, Charles, thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. Thanks, I, will see you. I will see you in Vancouver. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.